let's now transition over Aaron to the film room. Let's break down some film here. And do you want to start with Youngstown State's offense or defense first, Aaron? Uh, let's go with the defense. All right. The defense first. And there was two plays you sent me. Uh, which one do you want to talk about? Mm, let's do where their wide receiver – our running back, I'm not sure, maybe it was the tight end, did a little shallow cross underneath. Okay. Uh, the one where he slips or not the the, the one nope. where he does? Okay, gotcha. Other one. Here, perfect. Here we go. Let's bring this one in for all of you. This is just going <clears> to <throat> loop over and over and over again. So go ahead and set this play up, Aaron, and tell us all about it. All right, so here's the deal with uh, Youngstown State's defense. They run a pretty traditional 4-3. Um, I – you know, looking at the Valpo game film, they don't really do anything fancy. Um, I would imagine because they noticed Indiana did disguised coverages and it seemed to throw McCord off. They'll probably do something similar. Um, so, you know, they may they may line up in man and then bail um, just to throw him off, thinking that, well, OK, we got a man, a man coverage. Maybe we can get away with this pass or that pass, you know, and then they do a bail. Um, and then, you know, safety over top type thing and just full McCord the way Indiana did. Um, their defensive secondary, good coverage, not too bad, especially in the red zone. They did a nice job in man coverage there. But on this particular play, um, something you'll notice, too, is their strong side defensive end lines up. And this is, again, this is kind of traditional 4-3 stuff. Their strong side defensive end lines up in a seven technique. So he's like on the inside shoulder of the tight end, uh, and that just gives him that leverage on the end. But they run a lot of zone coverage. You see those linebackers sitting up top there? That guy just snuck underneath, and, uh, yeah, actually it was the weak side tight end. So, you could, you know, Ohio State could get away with some nice shallow crossings the way we used to, um, a la – when uh, Chris Olave and Garrett mm -hmm. Wilson used to do it a couple years ago, um, we toasted Michigan on that yeah. numerous times. That would be um, G. Scott Jr. right there, basically running yeah. across the middle. And given how he looked, uh, uh, I thought he did really good in that first game. I, G. Scott's probably getting a lot more yards than what this kid did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's bigger, faster, and stronger than this kid, and, and I'm 99% sure of that. Um, but again, that's the difference in talent levels between the schools, of course. Um, but this is something that, you know, you could even run a double shallow cross. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of things we can do out of this. You know, the wide receivers ran the secondary further down the field and the linebackers dropped in coverage. And that's really what sprung that play. So that's that's something Ohio State can absolutely take advantage of right there. And there's there's different variants of that, too, that you could run with the wide receivers uh, as opposed to the tight end. You would just simply keep the tight ends uh, blocking at the line to give Kyle McCord more time. Beautiful. So that's that's kind of what I saw on that play. Uh, let's okay. move to the next one. Sure. This is my favorite because the, the receiver got 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 tackled by the turf monster. <laughs> <laughs> hey man it happens to the best of us okay? Don't be it, happens, <laughs> it happens to me just walking it through my house what are you talking about he said i went to get the mail the other day and fell yeah. down the driveway <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh on this one um valpo is in uh looks like 10 personnel so they got you know twin uh, receivers on both sides um and what i'm seeing here is something similar Zone coverage, you know, uh, you got the wider or the I'm sorry, the corners stayed in a shallow. I think they tried to set up like a high low. And I don't know if Valpo just kind of let's see what I saw here. OK, yeah. RPO would on them. OK, so they hit him with that RPO. So that's something Ohio State also has done in the past uh, past. So, you know, he did the play action there to the running back. He saw, you know, the wide receiver saw that uh, the, the corner was basically falling backward in his coverage um, and looked like the safety kind of got tangled up with him there. And uh, the receiver took advantage of it and hit, hit a little slant there. Um, unfortunately, he tackled himself, but uh, again, it happens, <laughs> happens to the best of us. Maybe it was, it was the penguin. It was the penguin. So a question here about the middle linebacker for Youngstown State. Did he just misread 
Did he think it was a, a run and that's why he kind of went to the line of scrimmage? Or did he go on like a like a was he like on kind of like a, a blitz here? Like what because he he completely leaves the middle of the field wide uh-huh. open. Yep. And listen, that's part of the RPO reading process, right? So quarterback fakes the handoff. Uh, unfortunately, the linebacker for Youngstown State, he completely vacated the middle, like you said, Eric, and mm-hmm. he bit on that run. Well, the receiver sees that, vacated the whole middle of the field. That's what opened up that slant, because if the linebacker, uh, if he had stayed home or stayed in that zone, that slant's not there to throw. Yeah. In Chris, all likelihood, they hand it off. Chris, you're going to have to go back and add one tackle for the Youngstown State Penguin for on your stats here. One, yeah, one that, for the... old, old boy definitely, definitely <laughs> tripped up on the Penguin scarf. All right, let's move to the offense now for Youngstown State there. Uh, Aaron, you want to do the pass or, or the um, – let's see. Let's do the yeah, run. The, the run first? All right, yes, here we please. go. You got it. Okay, so on this – uh, looks to me like they're lined up in 11 personnel, maybe 12. I can't really tell. But they've got a guy coming in motion across the field. Um, and if you'll notice, the wing comes across the line and kicks out the end. Okay. Now that's called split zone blocking. All right. But the play call was likely a read option. So the fact that that split zone worked so well, he was able to seal off the end, he handed it off. What they could have done, okay, that's kind of like a triple option. So if he didn't hand to the running back, the quarterback then has the option of running it himself. However, probably wouldn't have been advisable because there's two uh, secondary players waiting for him in the middle of the field. Um, Or he could have used that motion man as a pitch man. Right. However, he read it correctly. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, ultimately, uh, he got, okay. He got stopped. I saw later in the film that, uh, that play was actually successful and it sprung the running back for like a 60 yard run, 55 yard touchdown run. Yeah. Uh, some, some long run. It was nice. They did it really well. Yeah. You run that a couple times and you, and you might get someone to bite on it and it could open up, but you know, if the wide receiver takes out the cornerback here and the safety comes down, on that tackle and takes out the quarterback and he pitches it to the man in motion. That means that the uh, safety across the field has to get that, that ball carrier. Yeah. So there's, it's a, it's, it's a little bit of, of, of what you, what are you reading there from that uh, other safety? Right. Yeah. It just depends on what you're seeing. Um, he did make the correct read. I just think that um, Valpo just made a good defensive play. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, uh, their linebackers were able to get in there and make a stop. Secondary came up. Um, but, it, yeah, you're right, Eric. Uh, if you notice the wide receiver on that, he's angling toward that corner. He was going to seal that edge. And if he sustains his block, Youngstown State, if they pitch it, probably six on that Yeah, play. Yeah, I think so. Uh, how do you blow this up? I think defensive tackles getting great push blows yes. this thing up. Yes, and I would look for Ohio State's defensive line. Um, to get a better push this week uh, again. And I think that's just a lot to do with the type of athletes we have compared to what they have. Uh, and that, I mean, that's just the nature of the sport, you know, eat or be eaten. Yep. Um, so that's it for that. Let's pull up. I, I, I wanted to also tell you guys, you know, the split zone that should look familiar to you guys. Ohio state ran that. Nope. And split zone blocking has become very popular, uh, similar to how similar to how just regular zone blocking is. All right, Eric, you have the other one pulled up? Let's go. Let's roll. Okay. So on this one, again, you're going to have split zone blocking, and you're probably like, what the heck? I thought that was a running scheme. Well, that's, that's how you would, de- you, you would fool the defense into thinking. Uh, that it's a run on top of the fact that it was a play action. Okay. So again, read your keys, follow your guy. Uh, I think uh, Valpo in this play was in a cover three uh, because they have a single high safety or it could have been, actually, you know what? It was man because the corner completely followed him. Um, 
so they played that they they played that very well defensively and Ohio State would have to do something similar. There was no open receivers that forced Youngstown State to have to run for it. However, I saw a couple other times where this play was successful and it wasn't huge long gains. Not everything is a 60-yard pass as you guys should know by now, even though we are spoiled as Ohio State fans with that sort of thing. Um, that's just not the case for these guys. If they get, you know, a 10 yard gain, 15 yard gain, that's pretty solid for them. And honestly, that's solid for anybody. Cause all you need is first down after first down until you get to the red zone and can, you can score some points. But on this one, they had the you know, split zone blocking and ultimately, uh, Youngstown state's receiver running across the field is what allowed a, a little bit of a, a lane to the outside for the QB to escape to. However, he's just not fast enough to get there. <laughs> right. So, so you get this result where he gets tackled out of bounds. But again, uh, look for something similar to this on Saturday against Ohio State. They're going to try to do a split zone play action uh, pass. It may or may not work. Depends on Ohio State. Of course, it will always come down to how Ohio State reacts. Um, but I would look for all these type of plays, you know, just kind of a, I don't want to say a vanilla 4-3 defense, but that's essentially what it is. They don't really do anything special. So look for a 4-3 defense. Uh, they read their keys well. They're not bad for the level that they're at, the FCS level. Offensively, they're just, they're doing all the things that you saw Ohio State do over the last few years. They're split zone blocking, zone blocking, uh, the play action out of split zone crossing routes and the like there you go man so aaron breaking down some film there for us getting ready for youngstown state i think if ohio state comes out and just again doesn't do anything stupid defensively there should be a lot of three and outs mm -hmm. they should they should be forcing youngstown state in a lot of three and long third and longs pin your ears back go blitz the quarterback don't be afraid to jump some routes a little bit here. You know, I, we need we need to turn the football over this week. We yes. need to create some turnovers. Yeah. You know, they played really sound last week, but they did not create a turnover last week. That's something that this defense needs to do. Uh, any last thoughts on the film there or anything from Youngstown State you want to talk about, Aaron? Um, I, something I noticed is they do run a lot. Their defense runs a lot of zone. Okay. So this really is a good opportunity for Ohio state to get back to their bread and butter, the crossing routes, the mesh, um, and get, get back on board, get, uh, get in sync with each other from the, from McCord to the receivers, uh, McCord, this is a good game for him or Devin Brown, depending on how the, you know, coach day decides to, to divvy that playing time up. But it's, it's a good opportunity for McCord to really get his confidence going. That's really what this game is for this week. Yeah. Or does Devin Brown play better? I, we're going right. to find out. Question marks all around on that thing. Absolutely. Chris, you got any last thoughts on this? I just don't feel like we're going to get the opportunity to see if Devin Brown plays better. It, you know, I, I agree. You're not the only one that feels that way. Absolutely.